Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Uh, happy Easter. Happy Easter. Yep, still Easter. <laughs> still be Easter for another 50 days, 40 days, excuse me, 42. Anyway, this is a time for us to be reflecting on the meaning of our baptism, the meaning of our belonging to our Lord Jesus. So let's present ourselves humbly before the Lord now and ask healing and forgiveness where we need them. Lord Jesus, bread of life and food for our journey, Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, crucified Lord, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, risen and ascended in glory, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. 
Let us pray. O God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font we have been washed, by whose spirit we have been reborn, by whose blood we have been redeemed through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were done among the people at the hands of the apostles. They were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the others dared to join them, but the people esteemed them. Yet more than ever, believers in the Lord, great numbers of men and women were added to them. Thus they even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one or another of them. A large number of people from the towns in the vicinity of Jerusalem also gathered, bringing the sick and those disturbed by unclean spirits, and they were all cured. The word of the Lord. Our response to the Lord's word is number 808. This is the day. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, your brother, who share with you the distress, the kingdom, and the endurance we have, have in Jesus, found myself on the island called Patmos because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. I was caught up in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet which said, write on a scroll what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me, and when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, 
one like the son of a man, wearing an ankle-length robe with a gold sash around his chest. When I caught sight of him, I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I'm alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. Write down, therefore, what you have seen and what is happening and what will happen afterwards. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus again said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand, and put it into my side and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen me and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. God is good all and all the time. So the second Sunday of Easter, also known as Divine Mercy Sunday. So that is why we have uh, this image up here, showing the Divine Mercy of God. And also today we launch 
the Bishop's Annual Appeal 2022. And we have a message uh, from our Bishop, which we shall listen a few minutes from now. So I just want to tell you a short story about these two brothers who lived on adjoining farms and fell into conflict. So it was the first serious rift in 40 years of farming side by side, sharing their machinery and trading labor and goods as needed without conflict. Then the long collaboration fell apart. It began with a small misunderstanding and it grew into a major difference. And finally, it exploded into an exchange of bitter words followed by weeks of silence. One morning, there was a knock on John's door. John was the elder brother. He opened it to find a man with a carpenter's toolbox. I am looking for a few days' work, he said. Perhaps you would have a few small jobs here and there I could help with. Could I help you? Yes, said the older brother. I do have a job for you. Look across the creek at that farm. That is my neighbor. In fact, it is my younger brother. Last week, there was a, a meadow between us, and he took his bulldozer to the river Levi. And now there is a creek between us. Well, he may have done this to spite me, but I will do him one, uh, one better. See that pile of lumber by the barn? I want you to build me a fence, an eight-foot fence, so I wouldn't need to see his place or his face anymore. The carpenter said, I think I understand the situation. Show me the nails and the post hole uh, digger, and I'll be able to do a job that pleases you. The older brother had to go to town, so he helped the carpenter get the materials ready, and then he was off for the day. The carpenter worked hard all day long, measuring, sewing, nailing. And about sunset, when the farmer returned, the carpenter had just finished his job. The farmer's eyes were wide open, and his jaw had dropped. There was no fence there at all. It was a bridge. A bridge stretching from one side of the creek to the other. It was one fine piece of work with handrails and all. And the neighbor, his brother, or his younger brother was coming towards them with his hand outstretched. You are quite a fellow to, to build this bridge after all I have said and done to you. The two brothers stood at each end of the bridge and then they met in the middle, taking each other's hand. They turned to see the carpenter hoist his toolbox onto his shoulder. No, wait. Stay a few days. I have a lot of other projects for you, said the older brother. I would love to stay on, the carpenter said. But I have many more bridges to build. During this Divine Mercy Sunday, Jesus is the bridge maker who reconciles humankind to God by bestowing his mercy upon us and forgiving our sins. And he's calling upon all of us to do 
the same. To be bridge makers by being messengers of mercy and forgiving love. Today from the gospel reading, we, we see Jesus coming despite the doors locked and standing in the midst of the frightened disciples and saying to them, peace be with you. And you realize he said three times, peace be with you. He did not reprimand them for abandoning him at the hour of need. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and they rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Then he tells them, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. So he's incorporating them in his own mission. So as the Father has sent me, so I send you. That is why, by the way, when bishop comes here for mass or when you attend a mass led by the bishop, the bishop does not say, the Lord be with you. What does he say? He says, peace be with you. He has the fullness of priesthood in that line of the apostles. So after telling them that I send you, giving them that mission, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. So Jesus instituted the sacrament of mercy. So he commissioned them, and he's also commissioning us to be ambassadors of mercy. The clergy in a, in a ministerial way, and all of us through the various acts of mercy. And one way of putting into practice the message of Christ on this day is by participating in the mission of Christ through our local church or the diocese. And today Bishop Bradley is ex uh, giving an exhortation on the same which I invite all of us to listen pray, uh, prayerfully as we embark on this uh, bishop's annual appeal for the next uh, two months. And if we do it right, I think one month is enough for us and we are done. And I believe we will. So we are going to listen to the message from Bishop Bradley about bishop's annual appeal 2022. Greetings, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. It's a great joy to come to you during this glorious Easter season when we can be proclaiming once more, Alleluia, Jesus is risen. As you know, we're also continuing to celebrate our diocesan jubilee year of the Holy Spirit, all the way through till Pentecost Sunday. And I hope that during this year that you've been able to grow in your awareness of the works of the Holy Spirit in your own life. Through the Holy Spirit's sevenfold gifts, we pray that your life is bearing fruit, the fruits of the Holy Spirit in all the ways that you are living your lives. Jesus shares with us what we need to be faithful to the vocation that we all share through our baptism, to live and grow in holiness throughout our lives. And the Holy Spirit is what empowers us to do that. Toward the end of this Easter season, when we celebrate the great feast of the Ascension, we will hear Jesus tell his apostles as his departing message, 
you are to be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. And that's the same challenge that all of us have as well through our baptism, to be joyful missionary disciples, witnesses to the risen Jesus in our world. One of many other ways of doing that, but one practical way is by the your generous support to the bishop's annual appeal. And it's through that appeal that we're able to fund the ministries, the programs, the services of our diocesan church. And so in this brief message, I'd just like to focus on explaining how your generous support furthers the mission of the church here in our diocese in three particular ways. By fostering vocations to the priesthood, by helping to strengthen uh, our parishes to be vibrant places, and third, by reaching out in charity to those who are in need. First of all, by fostering vocations to the priesthood, you really help to fund the specialized education and formation our seminarians need to become solid, holy, well-formed future priests. And once ordained, those diocesan priests give their lives in priestly service to accompany you every step of the way of our journey of faith. Our priests celebrate Mass for us each day. They ensure that the Holy Eucharist is with us to be the essential spiritual food we need for our life in this world. And they celebrate the Sacrament of Penance regularly, helping us to find forgiveness for our sins. In addition, they'll be there to help prepare and witness your sacramental marriages, to baptize your children, to provide the sacraments of the sick, and in general, provide for us that much-needed pastoral and spiritual care we all need. An investment in the priesthood is an investment in the church. We also need to keep finding ways to make more vibrant our 59 parishes and 28 parish collaboratives in their mission to be centers of hope for the faithful. And our diocesan offices provide our parishes with support, tools, programs to better serve our parish communities. A number of these resources take place really behind the scenes. Financial support, training in human resources, administrative and supervisory accepting, uh, assistance for our parish, our Catholic schools, and religious education programs, communications help, and so much more. Other ways of helping our parishes to be vibrant in the ways of sharing our faith include major events during the year, our annual catechetical conference, our online religious education programs, the online faith formation and enrichment programs, professional development for our Catholic school educators, to name just a few. And thirdly, Jesus told us that the most important of all the commandments is for us to love God and love our neighbor. This is most evident as we reach out with Christ's love in Christian charity to those who are in need. One example of how we do this through the Bishop's Annual Appeal is by supporting the life-affirming works of Catholic Charities, Diocese of Kalamazoo, and the Catholic Community Center in Benton Harbor. These organizations are the ones that in our name, in the name of the church and the diocese, reach out in loving service to young mothers in need, troubled youth, those struggling with mental health issues, and those needing to secure basic human needs in food and utilities. And so as we continue to respond to Jesus' mission, that we are to be his witnesses, helping to continue advancing the kingdom of God here in the nine counties of our diocese. I thank you for prayerfully considering your gift. Your support of the Bishop's Annual Appeal today is an investment in the church of tomorrow. God bless you now and always. Thank you very much.
Let's uh, stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's lift up our prayers now before the Lord, confident of God's love and mercy. For the joy of Easter to remain in the hearts of the faithful and for church leaders to share the good news with love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders to, to strive for peace, for an end to war and suffering, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those burdened with illness and pain and those in need of food and shelter, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sister diocese, our sister parish, and our St. Ambrose Parish family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that we may see the work of the bishop's annual appeal as an opportunity to extend our love and service beyond the boundaries of our parish and local community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed, especially the benefactors of our parish and those in our book of intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Abigail Christine Deloach, who passed away recently, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Patrick McGuire, for whom this Mass is celebrated, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now let us invite the intercession of our Blessed Mother, saying, Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Please join in singing number 505, We Walk by Faith.
pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your church, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, we may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, this day when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who, was, who has taken away the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed our death and by his rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Ambrose, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we too hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's give one another now some sign of peace. Peace, my friend.
of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Parish Directory Picture Week is next week. It is not too late to sign up. Please see the counter in the vestibule for details on how to sign up or online or call the office. Save the date for the St. Ambrose First Annual Golf Classic Tournament on Saturday, July 16th at 9 a.m. at Eastern Hills Golf Course. Registration forms will be available beginning the weekend of May 7th and 8th. If you would like to volunteer or you or your business would like to buy a hole or donate prizes for this worthwhile event, please call the office. The Bishop's Annual Appeal is an opportunity for all Catholics in the Diocese of Kalamazoo to join together to further the mission and ministry of our church in Southwest Michigan and beyond. Our support of the work of the larger church through a pledge to the Bishop's Annual Appeal is made possible by our returning a portion of what God has given us. Our 2022 goals are 57,876, and for every parishioner to participate. You will receive a mailing within the next two weeks that it will include a letter, a pledge card, and a return envelope from the bishop. Commitment week is May 7th and 8th. We ask you to prayerfully consider giving to the bishop's annual appeal. We are thankful for every one of you. Have a wonderful week. So I just have two things. Now in, in ancient Africa, when there were uh, very few automobiles, people used to you, you, will he, you would hear them say, I am taking Route 11. Route 11 means walking, the two feet. <laughs> so walking, people used to walk to, to wherever to walk to. So there was this saying, if you want to go faster, you walk alone. But if you want to go very far, you work with others. And I think that's very right. So now that we have begun our bishop's annual appeal, I don't want to walk alone. So I want all of us we work together. And by doing so, we will we'll go very far. So because of that, I have two people who have uh, graciously accepted to help me run this uh, Bishop's Annual Appeal. I would like to introduce them and then all of us, and if you'd like to jump in, that would be wonderful too. I would like us in one month and I know we'll make it. So, Woody and Cindy, please come. So they will introduce themselves and say, say something. Yes. Yes. Hi there, I'm Cindy Schrauben, and this is my husband, Woody Isaacs. Um, we're longtime members of the parish. I've been thinking about it, and it's 26 years now. Um, we raised both our children here at St. Ambrose, and our younger son still comes around on Sunday and sings in the choir. Um, Woody's been playing bass in the choir for a very long time, too. So. Um, we've been around for a long time, and we've been very um, happy to be members of this parish. So thankfully, um, we thank Father Albert for asking us to help out. Um, he told us we were going to help, and then we went over there and met with him, and he said, we're leading it. <laughs> um, so one way or another, we'll get this through this together. But um, as he said, if anybody else wants to help out, um, we're welcome welcome you to come and help us. Um, we'll be, you'll be hearing a little bit more from us throughout the weeks. Um, but I think that's it. We just want to introduce ourselves and say you'll be hearing again from us. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then, uh, since we would like to have this Bishop's Annual Appeal done quickly, so I'm, I'm not going to Africa this year. 
So, but uh, there, are, there are two people who are going to Kenya next week on Wednesday. And because I'm not going home, they have said the first stop will be at my home and they'll spend some few days with my, with my mom and, and everybody there. And then go to Lodwa and then see the animals and everything and come back. So may I invite you to come, come. Pat and, and, and Mike. So we are going to give them a blessing that they may have a safe trip, nice stay, come back and then we go back again. So Father Mike. You probably can tell which one is Pat and which one is Mike. It could go the other way, but it's Mike and Pat. Let's stand and bow our heads for God's blessing. Holy Father, we give you thanks for the spirit of mission and confidence that you give to people of our own flesh and blood. We thank you for Pat and Mike, for their willingness to share with one another and with us in some way the outreach of Christians to Christians. Bless these two as they go forth and bless them with a good, safe, pleasant trip. Bring them back safely to us and help us to receive them with joy when they come back. We pray this with confidence in the name of Jesus, our Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. So, by the way, they are already preparing four goats. Four goats. Four goats. <laughs> Yes, and uh, they are excited to receive you, and uh, I told them you are coming on behalf of all of us. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is number 64, Christ the Lord is Risen Today.